We know what you're thinking, the new specialised Epic World Cup looks rather like a certain trek. While comment sections everywhere have been swamped with looks like a... Uh, for years, there is no doubting that the Epic World Cup shares more than a passing resemblance to Trek's Super Calibre. Both bikes have the rear shock integrated into the frame's top tube. Both feature less than 100mm of rear wheel travel and they're designed for the world's fastest cross-country races. So has Specialized just been taking a sneaky peek at Trek's homework or have they created a new benchmark cross-country race bike? Let's find out! Like the aforementioned Trek Supercaliber, the new Epic World Cup features a Hartel-esque silhouette that hides the rear shock into the frame's top tube. While the Trek uses an isostruct suspension developed alongside Fox, which basically utilises flex in the seat stays, this bike uses a more traditional shock and linkage design. Specialised are citing the new bike as a silver bullet for its elite rider's needs. As bullets go though, this is a different calibre to its contemporary rivals. Going against the trend of longer travel XC bikes, like the 120mm travel Scott Spark RC, the new Epic World Cup features just 75mm of rear wheel travel. The new bike uses a small linkage hidden away under the top tube. The linkage is considerably smaller than the previous Epic frame and is said to increase stiffness. This is then teamed with a 110mm fork and revised geometry, so the head angle sits 1 degree slacker at 66.5 degrees, which compares to the 67.5 degrees on the previous model. This does make it as slack as the current Epic Evo. Going against the grain again, the seat tube angles are also slacker than before, at 74.5 degrees rather than the previous 75.5. Specialized claims the intention of the new Epic World Cup is to kill off hardtails from cross-country racing, and this means that Specialized will no longer produce an epic hardtail above the comp level. How does this make you feel? Let us know in the comments. The Epic World Cup is only available in Specialized 2 highest spec levels, S-Works and Pro. We tested the flagship S-Works model out in Girona, Spain, which uses a higher modulus and therefore lighter carbon frame than the Pro model. We know all you weight weenies are crying out for some numbers, and Specialized claim that the new bike weighs 1,756 grams for a size medium, including the shock and hardware, making it a claimed 110 grams lighter than the Pro frame set. This makes it one of the lightest full suspension bikes around. A significant departure from the previous Epics going right back to the 2002 original is that the rear shock no longer uses Specialized inertia valve brain technology. The RockShox SID World Cup integrated design shock has been developed in partnership between Specialized and RockShox. The shock has independently adjustable positive and negative air springs. To complement these, it can also be set up in three modes, which the brand refers to as gulp settings. Sounds good, but these can't be adjusted on the fly, so once set, you have to get off the bike and change them if you want to. A firm no gulp setting requires maximum force for the suspension to initiate, as there is no air in the negative spring. The brand says it is best for smoother courses. The medium half gulp setting has an increase in negative air pressure, which makes it easier to initiate travel and has better small bump sensitivity for rougher trails. And finally, the active full gulp setting has maximum negative air pressure and features a more linear progression with a flatter spring rate. To help with smoothing out bigger hits, Specialized says custom flanged jounce bumpers, basically rubber bottom out bumpers placed at the end of the shock's damper, provide an aggressive hook at the end of the stroke to manage bottom out control. The brain technology still lives on in the Epix fork however, which as I mentioned has increased from 100mm to 110mm in travel. In terms of the smaller details, the Epic World Cup can accommodate up to a 36 tooth chainring with the two models in the range featuring 34 tooth chainrings as standard. The brand says the maximum tyre size is 2.3 inches front and rear. How to keep things quiet is a rubberized protector that covers the drive side chainstay and home mechanics will rejoice seeing the threaded bottom bracket. So long press fit! We were lucky enough to test the range topping S-Works Epic World Cup but unfortunately at the time of filming we don't have any pricing available. It is about as exotic as mountain bikes get though. 
check out the Bike Radar news story on the website as we'll publish that once we get it. The S-Works version we've been testing is equipped with house brand Roval's Control SR wheelset. These feature a nice and wide 29mm internal profile and have a claimed weight of just 1,240 grams. The wheels are booted in specialised fast rolling 2.35 inch Renegade Control T5 at the rear, while the front uses a grippier fast track S-Works T5 T7. RockShox provides the suspension in the form of the aforementioned SID World Cup integrated design rear shock and 110mm travel SID SL Ultimate Brain Fork. SRAM's all new XX SL Eagle T Type Axis transmission features, along with its new direct mount power meter, a crucial consideration for top level racers. The Level Ultimate Stealth two piston brakes with a new inline master cylinder provide a profile that sits closer to the bars to add a secondary hand position, which is a nice side benefit. Specialized has gone very on vogue with an integrated one piece handlebar and stem. It features a bolt-on computer mount, while the bars have a back sweep of 8 degrees. Specialized claim they tip the scales at 250 grams for a 70mm stem and 780mm bar. While this is pretty light, it does mean they lack any kind of bar rotation adjustment, so you better like the position they put your hands in or you'll be stumping up for a new bar and stem. The seat post is also by Specialized. The Control SL seat post is 450mm in length and is held in place by a 2 bolt micro adjust seat collar clamp. The brand claims this weighs 180 grams. While such a light cockpit will appease the weight weenies out there, having a fixed position bar and stem and no dropper post means you're going to have to like the stock riding position for both climbing and descending. How does the all new bike ride though? Well, we had three days on the S-Works Epic World Cup around Girona in northern Spain, alongside some seasoned pro and semi-pro cross-country races. Safe to say, the bike was in worthy company, and our staff writer Nick. The trails were a mix of unseasonably tacky and wet Spanish mud, with long climbs and descents, perfect for testing an XC race bike. We hope to get the Epic World Cup back in the UK for a full review in future to see how it performs on home trails with hopefully more Spanish style sunshine and less of the mud. We all know XC bikes need to climb like the proverbial off a shovel, and before you even turn the pedals in anger, it's easy to see Specialized has made this one of the epic World Cup's main priorities. The wildly lightweight Roval Control SR wheelset and stupendously fast rolling Renegade and fast track tyres give the bike a direct, lively feel under acceleration yet still offer good levels of grip on a range of surfaces. The wider rim profile and tyres allow us to run lower air pressures, complementing the supple tyre casing to help conform to the terrain and improve grip. We eventually settled on 22 psi in the rear and a whisker over 20 psi in the front. With these pressures it was difficult to break traction on even the slickest rocks, further boosting speed when climbing technical trails. The rear shock provides the bike with an excellent pedalling platform though we initially struggled to find a sweet spot with the suspension. In the firmest no gulp setting, pedal bob is virtually non-existent, giving the bike the feeling and responsiveness of a hardtail, even when mashing the pedals out of the saddle doing your best Christopher Blevins impression. We found it very efficient when climbing, especially on smoother fire roads, where the rigid feel of the bike turned pedal strokes into easy speed and elevation gain. In the no gulp setting, the Epic feels like a hardtail on smooth climbs but it also mimics one on rougher terrain too. The reluctance to enter the 75mm of travel results in a loss of grip on rough sections of uphill, where the rear wheel would bounce and slip over roots and rocks, relying solely on the tyre's grip. We used the medium half gulp setting the most, as we found it more balanced and complemented these slightly rougher trails better. In this setting, less force is needed to activate the suspension, which helps us find more grip on steep climbs while still giving a hardtail-esque feel on smoother ascents. For most riders outside of the tape, as included, this would be the Goldilocks setting. As with the brain on the previous model, there is no complete lockout or a remote setting of the bike. This set and forget system did allow us to think more about line choice before tackling an uphill section rather than button location. It's a far cry from complex remote scene on some rivals, like the Spark and its twin lock system. While the brain may be dead as far as the rear shock goes, it lives on in the RockShox SID 4. 
it provides a firm and supportive feel when pushing hard out of the saddle. But the inertia valves open up swiftly and keep the fork tracking the ground for good traction. The geometry of the bike is well suited for climbing. And while the 74.5 degree seat angle is slacking the previous Epic, your body weight is still nicely centered over the pedals. A long reach gives plenty of room to move about on the bike, allowing you to move forward and back to find traction over obstacles. SRAM's XX T-Type Eagle transmission performed faultlessly, allowing us to shift gear without lifting off the power. It's a big, big step forward over any other drivetrain on the market. The level stealth brakes have plentiful power and modulation for a race bike, and the inline master cylinder that sits right up close to the bars also made for a comfy perch for our hands, allowing us to hold the bars further inward. This extra hand position was nice if we wanted a more comfortable and upright posture, making long fire road climbs a little less taxing on your upper body. On the descents, the Epic World Cup really doesn't feel like it has only 75mm of rear suspension. The slack 66.5 degree head angle makes the bike feel confident and capable, so you can really get your elbows out over that 780mm wide handlebar. In the rear shock's firmest setting, the bike descends similarly to a hardtail, but with a little bit of extra forgiveness to take the edge off large impacts. Though on rougher terrain, the rear wheel of the bike felt skittish under braking, especially so on looser surfaces. That lack of small bum sensitivity and resulting loss of traction is the price you pay for the additional efficiency. In the middle setting though, this was noticeably less of a problem. Meanwhile, the relatively aggressive geometry made it easy to get the bike back into shape in both settings. We found the most active shock mode to be the best for descending complementing the 110mm travel SID fork and giving the Epic an almost mini trail bike feel, or dare we say it, that of a down country bike. Such is the confidence the bike offers, it egged Nick on enough to stack it pretty hard on a rock slab. <sighs> Specialized has kept the chainstay lens nice and short at 430mm, with the bike feeling playful and eager to change direction, while the longer front centre makes the bike stable through steep corners and rugged sections. The fast track front tyre was grippy on gravel and rocky sections, though the smaller side knobs met their match on muddy trails. For the intended use though, they're a great fit and suit the bike's personality. We found Specialized new control SL cockpit to be quite stiff, and the flared hand position took some getting used to when descending, as the bars put you in a bit of a cruiser-like position. It was comfortable for longer rides though, even if the stiffness of the bar was less welcome. This stiffer feeling is in keeping with the rest of the bike though, especially given its arrow straight race focus. The Epic World Cup certainly impressed us on descents though, going to show just how capable modern XC bikes are when the trails point downwards. Overall, we came away from our time on the Epic World Cup very impressed. It ticks all the boxes an XC race bike should, and while we might want something with a little bit more travel for marathons and longer stage races, for its intended remit of being an XCO World Cup and short track slayer, it feels more than up to the task. Those interested in an Evo version might be disappointed, so we'll have to see if Specialized have something hidden up their sleeves. We'll be covering any news on that, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Stay tuned for a longer term review in the future and meanwhile don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more XC videos check out this one.